Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review, and I hope you are having a great day today. Today's book is going to be a little different from what we usually cover. It'll be Serpentine, which was wrote by Thomas Thompson, and it was narrated by Mike Chamberlain. Well, well, hold up, hold up. It's me, Scrapwalker, the editor around here. Yeah, I bet you're a little confused right about now. Let me tell you, you got something in store. This ain't no ordinary book review. This is a book battle. In one corner, we got Shane, the bearded book bash. And in this corner, we have Serpentine. Now I want you to know, pre-edited this video, was near 40 minutes long. I'm hoping I can get it under 20. We're gonna keep it fresh because understandably, if you've seen the thumbnail, things are gonna go south for my man Serpentine. So we're gonna be keeping a tab on the goods and bad. I'll be here to provide commentary on his commentary comedically throughout. Enjoy. Let me say this, I can't recommend it. I really can't. If you like sci-fi genres, this is not really going to be a book for you. A friend of mine had recommended it to me, and they're like, hey, uh, it's kind of unique, it's different, you might like it, you might not. And this is going to be one of those books that you will either like it, or you will hate it. There won't be a between... <sighs> I think most people won't even finish it. Boo! Shane's done playing Mr. Nice Guy. And if they do finish it, oh, are they gonna be disappointed? First off, I didn't do any research on the book, so this is all gonna be exposition on my part. Not gonna be based in facts, it's not gonna be based in anything like that. So if I'm gonna speak, it's only because it's my opinion on the book. Now, the secondary point, narrations, so let's go ahead and knock that out. Hold up, hold up. Is Serpentine about to get a point? Mike Chamberlain actually did a fairly decent job reading this. I'm not sure how. <laughs> I should have known. I wonder if these bits can get even more out of hand. I don't know. I mean, the production was good. His voice was good. The different characters, more of almost like a true crime type of a novel. And I think that might be one of the reasons why I had an issue with it. I'm so used to books being packaged where you have your story arc and then you have your ending. There really wasn't an ending. It was just like I was driving along in a vehicle and then that vehicle ran out of gas and it stopped. There wasn't even like a brick wall. It, there wasn't a cliff to go over. I couldn't like Thelma and Louise this stuff. It was just, it stopped. To be fair to the person that recommended this book, they gave me that heads up. They're like, it's weird and they know that I like that kind of a thing so that's the reason why they recommended it and this time it just wasn't on now to, to be uh, another point of fairness there was a book that they recommended six months ago that I would have not picked up on my own that was like one of the better things it was such an enjoyable read that's why I did this <laughs> yeah let's give a little bit of a, a glance over it so the whole book is based on this idea where there was all these multiple people that were going to be affected by this one individual and his chaotic life this one individual I think his name was Charlie he was kind of a victim of circumstance in some ways the decision that he made really affected a lot of people around him. He was a shyster, he was a con man, he was somebody that if you were on fire, he would sell you the water to put out the fire that you were suffering from instead of at least spitting at you to help you out, you know? This guy, he was born in a time where it was wartime. The territory he was living in went from being a colony of this place to a colony of this place. It was released and so he was like, he was nationless. So that part of the story was kind of interesting, especially whenever he became a young adult. He was trying to get to his father although his father didn't want him and his mother didn't want him uh, but he couldn't because of the bureaucracy he couldn't find an identity he couldn't have an identity and if this is based off of a true story what a shit person I mean let's just be blunt about it because quite frankly he is if it's based off of somebody real but a dubious individual he has all these little conquests women are never enough so Freudian in the way that it was wrote Whoa, that street rules. Give Serpentine a bonus point. Wait a second. Shane's my boss. Wait, what? This book doesn't pay me. No. No, 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 no. No, we can do this another way. I'm sorry. You ain't gotta do that. I'm no. sorry. No! No! It was annoying at parts because he would go back and forth between, oh, I want to live with my father. Oh, I want to live with my mother. Granted, this isn't like talking about somebody in their teens. This person was in their late teens and 20s and 30s and was still going on about, I want to live with my mother or I want to live with my father. It was absolutely absurd. There's going to be times in life where everybody gets a hit and that's what family's for. Family is there for you to fall back on. That's not what you're supposed to do, but that's the way that it works because nobody else will help you out and your family won't help you 
out, what have you done in life to really make them that mad, right? This character, a anti-hero for sure. He doesn't really do anything to benefit anybody else besides himself. He runs Ponzi schemes. He abducts tourists from different locations and especially preys on people that speak French. And then he'll drug them with stuff that makes them have diarrhea so that they're dependent on him. He ends up with a hotel with a baby monkey living in it. A person that's supposed to be his wife, but she's actually going to be his secretary. But he keeps her around as the main squeeze. He's not going to be anything more than polyamorous and he continuously lies about everything that's around him. This is one of the reasons why I had a problem with the book is that kind of a character is something that really gets me upset. Now, I'm saying character, but this also translates into real life. Yo, give you Serpentine. Serpentine, tag me and it's, it's me, the other editor. You're, you're editor. Yeah. Shane, why are you looking like the lumberjack off that Watch I want to Get out of here. You shaggy-headed, lazy-editing imposter. Shane, keep it going. So anyway, the story goes on, and my god, it's like Eliad. It is so freaking large. It just goes on and on. I mean... It's it's insane. This this story just never stops. It it was a true act and diligence on my part to continuously listen to the story. Now, if it had been a physical book, I'm not one for burning books, but man, that would have really crossed my mind. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen, it must be Fahrenheit 51 in this business because that book just got burnt, son. I know that Audible has a return policy, but I did listen to it all the way through, and so I felt like since I did listen to it all the way through, that's on me, not on Audible. So I'm not going to try to return it because I just wouldn't be fair to them even though I didn't much care for the book and I know that says if you don't care for it you can't but it, it was just crap the writing in it there was a particular style that it was trying to evoke it went back and forth in between like third person first person perspective quite a bit person that should have been the narrator voice inside of the literature as it was wrote really wasn't clearly defined so sometimes you'd be in the middle of listening to it and this is not a dig at Mike Chamberlain at all it's the way that it was wrote so you would have one of the characters and then you would go straight into a point that should be like a narration style and it wasn't really clearly defined in the audio stuff and I'm sure that it wasn't like that in the the literature either it was just all the way around just not a good experience oh snap they're gonna be taking serpentine off the shelves after that one and even if I do have a tendency, I do like some true crime type stuff. It's not something that I get into all the time, but if I catch a story that's really interesting, I'll either watch it or I will read it. And I do have an appreciation for those sorts of things. So this isn't really off topic for myself personally, although I'm outside of my lane on YouTube for that. I just, I really did not like that story at all. I think that if it wasn't trying to, I just, I don't know. I don't know if that story could have been saved. And I think that the problem is, is that the story could have been done so simply and eloquently if the person that wrote it didn't have diarrhea of the typewriter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to cut out two minutes of this video for how long that disc was. Two bonus points. They just continuously went on about these inane little details that they could have come back around. For the most part, they did not. Whenever it comes to the Munchauser syndrome of trying to get people locked into being his family, ah, uh, that took up a a good portion of the book. The descriptions of how people felt what was happening within them without actually expressing how they felt. That was the thing that aggravated the most out of me, I think, was all these people that were referenced that this person affected, this Charlie person affected in a negative light. There wasn't a payout. There wasn't a, this person is now serving hard time. There, there was absolutely no kind of anything. That's why I suspect it was probably based off of a true story. And if it wasn't, oh my god, put the pen down, put it down. Just don't do it again. Okay, okay, we can't show that, we can't show that. Cut the camera. When it comes to the actual descriptions inside of the book, they're absolutely not there. I mean, it's, he's in a jail cell. That's it. That's all you get. Oh, there's hard packed ground. He's digging with a spoon. As cliche as that is. It's not that I would want this book to be New York. It's not that I would want it to be absolutely stylized and go to the point where we have like Bradbury or we have like these incredible descriptions that go on for pages and chapters at a time. No, there's a happy middle. There's a thing that Stephen King does in books where he'll describe two or three items with richness and then leave the rest to you. 
Yeah. And even the author, it references in the book how there's so many places and if they had a map and they were to try to draw it on there, it would be so just spidered across the whole continent that it, it would just look like a big spaghetti mess, like the flying spaghetti monster or something like that. The point about it is, is if they were to have put the descriptions about all the places that they visit inside the book, which kind of comes off confusing because we've got Madrid, France, Europe, North Korea, South Korea, Vietnam. I mean, it just, the list goes on and on. Not to mention the point of reason in the different prisons and this, that, and the other. It's just it's so bland that it really irks me to nobody else's end. It really does. Be <sighs> It just, um, it just is what it is. It's too bland in some places, and places where it should be enriched, it's not. That sucks. Flat out. I just don't care for that. You're probably right, Shane. Reading that book must have been bad, but not as bad as these animations. That's right. I'm calling out Serpentine's editing staff. I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe any time of the week. I already beat you once. I'll beat you again. <laughs> That's about enough of the story. So essentially the story goes on and on. It talks about all these people that he affects, which could have been interesting, but I got too much backstory of this one person that's supposed to be a lovey-dovey hippie type. This was one of those stories that was inside of the story. It's almost like Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. It's a dude playing a dude that's acting like a dude. It just blah, just blah. So let's get to the feelings. Cause I mean, if I go any further than that, it's gonna be just like I'm, I'm smack talking the book. Just in case any of you wonderful guys or girls or others happen to come across this and you're into the same stuff that I'm into, I wanted to give you a heads up. Just don't do it, okay? Just don't. Save yourself the time. As an audiobook, it is 24 hours and 13 minutes. I listened to all of it and I didn't skip any. One whole day of audio to say absolutely damn nothing. Don't like the book, not at all. What feelings did it bring up? Absolutely none except for aggravation and can we please get to the point? Because there wasn't one. Great golly, can we get a replay of that? Because there wasn't one. Do a little zoom. Because there wasn't one. <sighs> I'll do it real fast. Because there wasn't one. Ah, I can't walk. With the exception of don't be a shit person, I guess. Eh? Uh, or if you're going to be a criminal, at least be smart about it. Again, uh, I don't know. I really don't have much of a feeling on this with the exception of I didn't much care for it because it could have been so much more. I think that's the reason why it upset me is because if just a little bit of effort was put in because the cohesion was there, it does go from point A to point B, but if it had been given a point, either fictionalized or whatever, if the characters had been not embellished, if, like I said, it was based off a true story, which is what I'm kind of thinking with the details that are in it, and just the lacklusterness of it, maybe it could have been something. Maybe instead of 24 hours, if it had ended up 28 hours and those three other hours was giving the meat, giving the reason why we care about these people beyond just their victims and this one person did it to all these people. I've seen cartoons that were better developed. So my feelings about the book is skip it, don't do it, save your money. It's not worth your time, efforts, and Already energies. Stole for the pin. One, two, three. Yeah, it's over. The match is over, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. If we even done question of the week, I'll do it. I've already taken over most of the episode anyway. Have you ever watched a movie or read a book or had anything that you partaked in? Maybe even like a festival to theme park you went with or a trip with your family that was supposed to be good, just turned out to be awful. Like when I was young and I liked superhero movies, or oh, I still do, but I watched The Watchmen, the rated R, intercourse, good guys dying film. Now I enjoy it. But a good old fashioned 12 year old me despised that jazz. Was not a big fan. Or Ex Machina. That movie? Hate it. Hate it. All right, but we're going to wrap this up because I got like 15 more minutes of film I just got to cut. Thanks for tuning in for James Books and Reviews of Bang Bang. And the slide this over here. And, um,. 
that one or this one. Leave a like and subscribe. Yeah.